So what if? Our text starts off, what if? What if some did not believe? Because we're talking about God here. Is God unfaithful? Will God come up short? Notice how this is how God is looking. We're getting an idea here of how God assesses things. Men, without the eyes of the Lord giving them eyes to see, they assess things a lot differently. But this is the way God assesses things. Our text says some. Brother, you know, if you've ever been to a stadium or something, sometimes you can see the numbers could be great when you're doing a head count. Or if you ever see on TV, just waves of people, it just seems like, and you know that the event uh, is maybe an ungodly event. It looks like the numbers are stacked against us. But this is not the way God looks at it. God is the God of the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles. We only have one God. We don't have a God for everybody. We have one God. Amen. You know, in this country, and there are other countries that they use a, a system of voting to put somebody into power. And the more people vote for one person, wins. It doesn't matter if the person's good or bad. Now, in a higher view, we know God's the one who does this. He puts them in power. But see, men, they don't, they, they can't always see it like this. They think it's, well, if you've got a lot of numbers, a lot of people, well, that's the right. If they're saying that, if a lot of people are saying the same thing, that's the right thing. That's not always so. It doesn't matter if the, what the majority says. It matters what God says. That's what matters. See, we're being prepared for judgment here. We're, we're being prepared to, to meet our God. So we don't want to be wrong about this. We even have churches today that, that do the same thing. That, what does all the people think? Who cares what the people think? What if? <laughs> it doesn't matter what people think. It's what God thinks. We are aligning ourselves with God. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile. We are aligning ourselves with God. Because if you're not aligned with God in the end, well, it's not good for you. You become part of the sum. Men count the warm bodies that fill the seat. God looks at the heart of a man. That's how he counts the numbers. It's not who's sitting there. It's whose heart is for God that counts. If you're in a group of people that have 200 attending, but only have real, really 10 people that have a heart for God, and then you have another group of people that the number is 50, and they have 20 people that have a heart for God. You just doubled your numbers. See, this is heavenly mathematical genius here. You can't, you can't go by your eyes. See, the flesh can't handle this. You have to be able to get up high enough to see what God's doing. Flesh, it'll go by it's what it sees. But God gives you his, his, the way he sees things here. We're seeing how God sees things here. Heads weren't counted, hearts were counted. It is a temptation to think that you are wrong because the numbers of people are against what you, how you see it. When you're walking with the Lord, it can be a temptation. But see, this is, this is what the Lord's shown us here. Trust in me. See, when you're with me, the numbers don't matter. God's saying, you trust in me. I, I am the difference maker here. Not the numbers that are against you. It's me. God's drawing us to him. Men are always wrong when they're without God. 100% of the time. They're not right sometimes. They're always wrong. 
They get everything wrong. But God is looking for a people that love him and are devoted to him. And he will give them eyes to see the reality. See, brethren, there are people that are without God that they cannot see reality. They live in a fantasy world. Where it's a make-believe world that they don't see the judgment is coming. They don't see that the reality is eternal life without God is not good at all. There's not a little bit. Of, see, this is how wicked and evil it is. I have heard ungodly men and women say, well, I'd rather be in hell with all my friends in a big party than to be bored in heaven. Whew. You talk about getting it wrong. There ain't going to be no party in hell. Whatever goodness you got was right here. And as good as it got, that's it. As good as you thought it was, that's it. You're done. So when we're talking about numbers, let's get this straight. A big number for me is one trillion, so I'll use that. One trillion times a zero equals zero. You take one just man and you put him with God and he is more than one trillion. Eight people were saved on the ark. That may not be a, a big number to some, especially if you're having a, a church meeting and you're trying to pay the bills and you want as many warm bodies as you can to fill the seats. Eight people may not seem like a lot. But when you put eight people in the ark and after the waters subside, eight people is the majority. So if numbers were important, eight just became the biggest number on the world, in the world. That was the majority of the people. There are people who guess at how many people died in the flood. But they don't really know. But we do know how many people made it. God hasn't told us. God knows exactly how many people died in the flood. Why didn't he give us that number? Because there are some. The majority is who made it out. The saved were the point. Not how many were destroyed. God doesn't take any. He doesn't, he doesn't take pleasure in destroying people he doesn't take pleasure in, in counting the numbers of destructed the people that were destroyed he takes pleasure in eight were saved and humanity was not lost I am perfect and just in all my ways I am a faithful God I did not destroy humanity I kept it alive We know that Noah, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Genesis 6, 8. So Noah was more than them. Noah walked with God and was a just man, perfect in his generation. So does it matter how we live? When, does it matter? I mean, some will say, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God doesn't make a big deal about how you live, how you act. How he loves you just the way you are, unconditionally. But God does not make the focus on the unbeliever, but on those who believe. It's those who believe that God looks at. Now, because I do know how flesh I've seen flesh at work. I know how flesh thinks. I know how flesh reasons. I want to say here something about God's faithfulness. Flesh will say, ah, wait a second. You're talking about the Old Testament. That's a different God. That's different. That's different. You can't do that. You can't mix the two. Everything's changed now. Jesus hung out with sinners. Don't you know that? 
don't you know that he hung out with sinners? Don't you know that everybody was born into sin? For one thing, Jesus didn't hang out anywhere. He was working, doing the will of the Father at all times. There was no hanging out. So if you were around Jesus, you either were converted or you were not comfortable. People that were not converted, they had anger inside them, building up. And they wanted nothing to do with him except for kill him. That's what they wanted. Jesus said he was always working. He was always, he was healing and teaching. But unbelief, that hinders the work. See, if, if unbelievers were the point, then why do we have this? They, it's unbelief that hindered the work of God. In Mark 6, it says, starting in verse 2, he began to teach in the synagogue, and they were astonished by his teaching. It, this was in his own country, remember? It says he could do no mighty work in that area. He, few, he just had a few that he, he healed and took care of. A few, few sick, few sick people that he healed. Why? Was there not a lot of people in that area? Didn't we have great... Was there only a few people that were sick? Everybody else was taking vitamins or something? Why did he only... It's because unbelief was not the point. It was believing that was the point. It was unbelief that caused the work to be hindered. When people say he was looking for sinners to hang out with, to spend time with, they just don't know God. They don't know God's ways. God is not looking for unbelievers. He's looking for faithful ones who believe in what he's doing, who want to be a part of what he's doing. Now, in the same chapter, he sent he set the 12 out to do a great work and gave them power to do this. He didn't give them hamburgers and hot dogs to pass out. This is real power. He didn't tell them to go hang out with the unbelievers and just love them just the way they are unconditionally. Don't, don't, try to, don't say anything to hurt their feelings. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Brethren, we're talking about eternal life. We're not worried about people's feelings getting hurt. We're worried about them being separated from God for eternity. They were looking for believers that knew that they were born into sin, that they had something that they couldn't do anything about, and they wanted a Savior. They wanted God to do something for them. That's who they were looking for. They wanted someone to give them a word that God could do a work in this situation that they're in. Mark 6, 11 says, Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, you love them just the way they are unconditionally. And <coughs> no, that's not what it says. It says, depart. And when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Yeah. It shall be more tolerable. Let's talk about, I want, see, I want to talk about the New Testament and Old Testament here. Let's see how, God, how much God's changed. It will be more tolerable. We're in the New Testament. It will be new, more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it will for those people in that city. Sodom and Gomorrah, brethren, that was Old Testament. Why would it be more tolerable for them? Because now a light has come and they've rejected the light. This is not innocent. To reject Jesus, to reject God, to reject what God is doing is not innocent. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. What you believe doesn't matter. It's what God is doing. If you reject God, you are grouped together with the some or them. 
There's no, God doesn't give a number here. He just, the sum. A group of people that God will, he will reject some. Like Esau, who was rejected and found no place for repentance, Mm -hmm. though he sought it carefully with tears. (laughs) Genesis 27, 38, and also you find that in Hebrews 12, 16. There was no room. So we're, look, we're seeing how God works here. Men will look at the numbers and say, will God reject so many? Well, God says, that was only some. Amen. The point is that God rejected a few, but he's saving many. Amen. There's a number that cannot be numbered. It was their unbelief. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. The <coughs> they all. So we, we are seeing here, here how God works, how he thinks. They all came out of Egypt. Some did not get into Canaan. But the, all those who God wanted did get into Canaan. They did get into Canaan. So God's promise was fulfilled. The point wasn't the unbelievers. The point was those who believed. Was it God who changed? No, some had unbelief. They, somehow they took their eyes off of God. Did what God promised? Did it it change? Did he change his promise in any way? No, he didn't. Some did not believe. But all who believed, all who believed, will receive the promises of God. See, we have that. All will. All believers will receive. God is faithful. God does not become unfaithful because of some. He is faithful, and that doesn't change. He does not alter his course because of some. It doesn't matter how big the sum looks, God does not alter his course. If you continue to believe despite what some do or say, you will be blessed by God. God sees all who are faithful and continues to give them strength. For God so loved the world. People love to do this, right? They love to say this. What? what? We know God loves everybody just the same. So they'll take this, this scripture and go off on the, again, let's go back to men's reasoning without God always gets things wrong 100% of the time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can trust in God because he is faithful. You believe in him and you will be saved. But those who do not believe, see, that's the point that most people, when they quote that scripture, they just leave that whole thing out. They say, God so loved the world. Not to, he'll stop right there. Well, when some say, you see, God loves the whole world. You're correct. If you believe, you are who God loves. But if you don't believe, you don't even count. You're not part of the equation. You're not part of the number that we're talking about here. So we see from a higher view, God did love the whole world. But some did not believe. If you do not believe, you're... You're a part of them that are condemned already. John 3, 18. They count as zero. They don't count. All who believe in Jesus will not perish. They will be saved. The unbelief of some did not void God's promises. 
his promise. God has a purpose, and it will not change because of some. No matter how great the number of unbelievers compared to believers, it may seem at a particular t- point in time, the purpose of God still stays the same. See, I'm talking to some of, we have some of the brethren watching us that they're in an area that they feel like they're the only ones who believe God. It seems like everybody's against them. But see, we have this account of Noah where it seemed like everybody was against him, but God was for him. That changed everything. This is why it is not loving to tell unbelievers God loves them just the way they are. That is a lie. In fact, it is evil and wrong to, t- to lie to a person that is on track to being separated from God, that God loves them just the way they are. If anybody draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Hebrews 10, 39. Draw back, that means they can see it. God, see, God's not, on judgment day, there's nobody going to be pointing fingers at God and saying, it's your fault because you didn't do enough. No, that's not going to happen. You can't draw back from something you never had. God's revealing this to everyone. And people have drawn back from it. They have, they have not clung to the truth. It's, it's evil. All know the truth, but some reject God. It's not God who is unfaithful. It's some who reject God. No one is going to get a special place in heaven to fill out a form saying, but I was not told. God didn't, he didn't reveal it to me. I was, I was one of the few that didn't know about the, what God was doing. No, not, that's not going to happen. God has not, and he will never abandon his people. It's not going to happen. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Not at all. No matter Jew or Gentile, all who believe in Jesus will be saved. God cannot deny himself. This is why we must continue with Jesus. See, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if the numbers are against us or not. Continue with Jesus anyway. It doesn't matter who. Family members, it doesn't matter who they are. Turn their back. We must continue with Jesus. Jesus said to the Jews, which believed on him, if, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. John 8.31. So that's what we want to do, brethren. We want to continue. We don't want to let off. We don't want to be deterred by what it seems like everybody's doing. We want to continue. In John 15, 9, it says, Jesus said, continue in my love. He said this because God will not save a person that once believed and falls away. He cannot because he is faithful. We are told that although we must go through much tribulation, continue. Continue. In the faith, and we will enter into the kingdom of God, Acts 14 22. Brother, that is a promise. Mm-hmm. If you continue, yeah. even though everybody's falling away around you, if you continue, you will enter into the kingdom. Amen. But we have no such word for anyone who does not continue in the faith. The word for unbeliever. <laughs> is rejection from God. This is the faithfulness of God that we were enemies in our mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled if, if ye continue in the faith. Colossians 1, 20 through 23. If you continue. So brethren, God is faithful. He is faithful to bless 
or curse. He is a faithful God. If you believe and continue with God, you will be blessed. But to the unfaithful, to the unbelievers, curse and separation from God for eternity. Because God is faithful. So it's not over yet, brethren. See, the number wasn't counted until we get up there. It's not over yet. We, we still have this time to continue in the faith, yeah. to continue to believe God, to cast out anything that will bring us down, Amen. to not worry about those who murmur. Yeah. When you know Jesus is the one, you go to him and not worry about the murmuring Amen. because you can trust in God. Thank you, brother. Brother Aaron has our exhortation.